better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about Venom 3 shutting down production, obviously because of the actor strike. Uh, we had the writer strike about two months ago. I think it's been 70 something days now since the uh, writer strike. And obviously the script for Venom 3 was done. And anything that had a finished script that was ready to go into production and filming was allowed to do so. Uh, then the Directors Guild came along and they were going to have their negotiations and everything went well with that. So I think some people thought, okay, well, the Directors Guild went well, the Actors Guild will probably go well, and then we can go back and negotiate the writers' strike and, and work it out with the writers. And I think that was the hope. But what ended up happening is the studios, uh, you know, being the soulless entities that they are, or can be, or, or feel like they have to be, they decided to ask for a two-week extension. And then in that two weeks, instead of really trying to negotiate with the actors, they decided to just pump out extra interviews, shoot some, you know, reshoots, whatever they could do. Every studio is acting differently, trying to get stuff ready for their fall movies. So that way they could, at least for the next four to six months, be okay with not having actors around and writers around uh, to, you know, try to whittle them down and make them desperate enough to take an offer. And that seems to be what the case is here because that was actually printed. <laughs> I was blown away to see that, that some executive actually said, no, we want to make these writers and, and everyone who's striking, we want to make them actually, you know, regret doing this and start losing their apartments. And when they get that desperate, they'll take the deal we offer them. And that's just sinister. I mean, the fact, I know that's part of business, but you don't normally say that part out loud. Uh, so that just shows how little uh, these, uh, you know, executive types give a crap. Even Bob Iger came out and was like, yeah, the demands for actors are ridiculous. It's, it's you know, too over the top. They're greedy. And it's like really coming from a guy who literally off the works of, you know, like the Marvel franchise, for example, like that wasn't him on, you know, on a lot of levels. I mean, maybe he had some talks or, you know, w about some certain projects or something like that, but he didn't make these movies. He probably didn't have a ton of creative control over them or influence on them. Um, and instead, you know, that helped build Disney a lot of money and he got to reap all the benefits from it. And then he stepped away for a while and now he's coming back thinking he was going to bring the company back into the light. And uh, and he signed a new contract. And in that interview was like, these actors are greedy. And it's like, dude, you, you make way more money than you need to. Um, and you want to talk about greed. But that, I mean, that's fine. I know executives at that level are like, I should be doing this. This is uh, this is my value and my worth as like a person who runs a company or does this. And it's fine. I'm not here to debate that or argue that. My point is, though, is that people at the bottom uh, which a lot of actors are, you know, you think of actors, you think, oh, they all make millions of dollars, but that's not true. Um, I lived across the hall from a very talented actress for, for you know, many years, and uh, and she is so talented, and I kept hoping she would get, you know, a big paycheck one day, something that would just make her set for a while, if not for life, and, uh, and it, you know, didn't happen, although she's very happy now. She does a lot of great work, animation, you know, voiceover, video games, and TV, live action, She's all over the place and uh, she's amazing. But, uh, you know, I have other, act, you know, other actor friends and, and roommates that I've had that really just want to get their stuff out there and be seen. And they're living check to check. And you think, oh, well, they were on a hit show. You know, that must mean they make a lot of money. And as we've learned from actresses that were on Orange is the New Black, ever since things went to streaming and, you know, uh, there's been back in the days of cable, you would get a show and it would be really popular and would go to syndication after it you know, aired so many seasons. And so another network would run its reruns and you would get residual checks from that. And I think the cast of Friends for a while there were getting like almost $20 million a year just off residuals way after the show was over. Um, so that's how it used to be. Uh, you know, they would get a good fair chunk of money even after their work was done if they made a hit show like Friends. But like Orange is the New Black was a big show for Netflix and that, you know, the actresses on that show, they were coming out and saying, yeah, I made like $600 doing four episodes of Law & Order, but I only made $20 in a whole year from 54 episodes of Orange is New Black that I was on. 54 episodes they were on and they made a, they got a $20 check at the end of the year. Like, that's what I mean. Like, and that's what they're fighting for is, hey, I can't live off of that. If I don't get another acting gig, you know, and I know that's the risk, you know, I know I'm freelance and I'm trying and that's, that's part of the risk. But the, there's too much risk now. There's there's so much content going out there, but it's just hard for these you know actors to get 
these jobs and get them to last. And then sometimes, like in the case of Willow, you know, you have studios like Disney that will put a show on there. It gets bad backlash or bad feedback or whatever, and then they yank it. And then the, all those actors, you know, any chance they got to getting even a little bit of residual, all gone. So that's what's happening. You know, you're getting entire shows. You know, Z Zasloff did that over at Warner Brothers, just yanking shows and movies off and giving anyone a chance to making some extra money down the line when things are tough for them, just removing it for them, you know, and completely. And that's it's not fair uh, because that's, yeah, I know things change and times change and all that. I totally get that. But that's the point. Times have changed. We have AI now. We have all these things where you can digitally scan someone and use them as a background extra for the rest of, you know, past their life. You know, they could be used as background extras for the next 50 years and may only live for the next 10 years, you know. So it's like there's so much that's ramped up over the last decade from technology to way, the way things are with COVID, shutting down businesses, shutting down movie theaters, and then causing, you know, like industries to be affected. And then as those industries like movie theaters are trying to build back up, you have bomb after bomb this summer with movies just not doing that well followed by these two strikes. The first time that the writers and the actors have striked together since the 1960s. So there's just, it's an unprecedented time for this industry. And I know there are some people out there like, ah, I don't really like movies. You know, this doesn't affect me that much. And, and I completely understand that. And I get that. But for those of us who are involved and, you know, for people who make content about movies and stuff, it's, it's it, kind of life-changing in a way, depending on how long this strike goes. So for me here, you know, I won't have any Venom movie news to discuss for as long as this strike is going on until they go back into production. So what I'll try to do is catch up on the comic book, Summer of Symbiotes, and then I have another show that I was thinking about creating later this year, but I might start it sooner where we talk about things outside of movies and comic books, something a little bit different, where I have segments and it actually is like a, an actual show, like a talk show kind of thing. So I'm working on that uh, and we'll probably, you know, have more information on that in the coming weeks. But maybe I'll launch that in August now instead of September or October, which I was originally going to uh, launch it. So we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, but we'll have Venom, you know, video game content coming up with the Spider-Man 2 game. We'll have Venom comic book content coming up in reviews. we got uh, Carnage Week starting immediately after this video goes up. I'll have some videos going up Monday through Friday or Saturday of this week. And it'll be Carnage Week, you know, all week, just like we normally do, like Shark Week, but with just all Carnage stuff. So we'll have content on this channel, but I just wanted to just say... You know, to Tom and all the actors on Venom 3, obviously I stand with you. I, I hope you get what you're looking for or at least something very close to what you're looking for and what you want out of the, you know, studios as far as support and a partnership goes because that's ultimately what it is. And, uh, and I hope that comes to fruition. And I just want to say to all of you, I know you're bummed, but don't be. There, this is a battle that needs to be fought on a lot of levels. And so I'm going to be one who supports this, and I hope uh, that it just leads to something positive um, because sometimes in these situations, change is uh, inevitable, and it depends on what kind of change it is to see, you know, if it's good or bad. So so we'll see as the, you know, in the coming months, but um, I hope cooler heads prevail. I hope people realize they all need each other because we do. We all need each other. Um, we all make industries go, whether it's, you know, the postal service industry or the comic book industry or the movie industry. We all need each other, fans and, you know, people in the industry alike. We all need to work together on some capacity. We all have our roles to play to make sure these things and these characters we love, um, you know, movies we love and music we love and, and everything like last for generations. So, uh, so I hope that is the case. I hope it ends well and I'll, you know, keep covering it as much as I can as, as it pertains to Venom, uh, but maybe over on the talk show when we create that, we'll do updates for the, the actors and writer strike over there. So let me know your thoughts down below. I know you're probably bummed about Venom, you know, stopping production, but like I said, don't be too bummed. Let this happen. Let this fight happen. And hopefully while this battle's going on, you know, Kelly can like maybe rethink some things. Maybe she'll have some perspective now that she can step back without pressures of studios on top of her. Like, you know, go and film this, do this, get this out there. She can look at things, maybe dissect things and possibly, you know, create ideas to change things later when the writer strike ends and when the actors, you know, strike ends and everyone can come together. Maybe she'll have some ideas to go, all right, you know what? This is what I was thinking of. Um, so who knows? This could be a good thing if it gives more people time to think and have perspective but also hopefully it doesn't take too long because people's livelihoods are at stake here because like I said, most actors live check to check or below that. They don't make millions of dollars. And so it's, it's a fight for that as well. And it's a fight for if more movie theaters shut down, 
those people are out of jobs. And then people who do deliveries for popcorn and soda and stuff like that for the concession stand associators, they might lose their jobs because less routes will be on their, you know, on their daily routes and they'll need less delivery people. So it could have a chain effect. You know, there are talk shows like uh, Jimmy Fallon and those kind of shows that I'm not a big fan of, but a lot of them get actors and celebrities to be on their shows to talk about projects. Now they're not going to do that. They might have actors and, and people on to talk about the strike and updates on the strike, but they won't have them on to talk about any future projects. So this will change things for a while and uh, and and hopefully for a very short while uh, before, like I said, hopefully clearer heads prevail and real conversations happen about you know finding a middle ground um, because without that you know this industry could die uh, potentially or at least die as we know it so let me know your thoughts down below and we'll keep talking as always down there thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the future peace